for my birthday each year um i generally go to an art gallery with my daughters they take me to uh the josie fright gallery in derby uh because they know that um it means it means a lot to me that gallery uh, my gran used to take me there when um i was about seven years old but this particular year we went to see a da vinci exhibition at the same gallery or the same museum actually i should say and there was a, a collection of sketches which was great but obviously while we was there we had to go and look at the josie fry exhibition as well and this is a photo of my daughter's partner and there's killy in the push chair those of you that have been following me a while will know who killy is and he is introducing killy uh, dan uh, my uh, daughter's partner is introducing killy to josie fry so i sort of grabbed this photo and it when i saw it i thought i've just got to paint this so let's get into it <laughs> I've decided to paint this portrait uh, in Procreate. I do call it a portrait, or even though um, I, can't, I can't see Dan's face. But to me, it feels like a portrait. So I've decided to paint this in Procreate because, as I said in my last video, Procreate is my favourite app for painting pro portraits. So I begin by adding a colour to the background of the... Um, background layer and then i create a new layer and use the grunge brush because that is my favorite brush um for sort of getting in the background you can sort of put this texture on really quick and you can leave huge areas of the canvas where you don't have to paint over it so that's sort of really time consuming this old painting took little over an hour really and then I go into the turpentine brush and those two brushes are pretty much the only brushes I use uh, and for the blending I use the turpentine brush so uh, I create an, a second layer a third layer sorry for the uh, paintings in the gallery and start roughing those in and I'm not going to try and replicate these paintings at all that's not what it's about for me the scene is Dan and Killy uh, although Killy is actually asleep but I'd st still consider it an introduction to um, Josie Fright so I begin by getting these paintings in really and I'm not sort of thinking of, of Dan or Killy at all at this point I just want to get the sort of um, scene set so I'm sort of I, and I decided that I like the um, color palette by uh, John Sargent. So I've decided to stick with that palette. I'm finding that um, I want to work a bit more with uh, a limited palette rather than just picking colors off the color wheel at the minute so I felt that uh, I sort of looked at the palette before I started I didn't just pick it randomly because I wanted to paint like uh, or use the color palette of John Sargent I wanted to um, just use a limited palette and those were the colors that I thought would work really really well with this so I am forcing myself to stick within that palette although on occasions I will select a color off the palette and then adjust the saturation of it or the uh, contrast uh, somewhat but apart from that all the colors are coming off that palette and all of these palettes by the way that I've got um, are there's a free download for them on my website so link will be uh, below so you can find that if you haven't got them already there's about I don't know 10 different color palettes by artists like uh, John Sargent Gustav Klimt, uh, Turner, and many, many more. So if you haven't got them already, just shoot along and, and grab those. Anyway, back to the painting. I'm finding uh, recently I've kind of changed the way I uh, sort of paint figures in my scenes now. I create a new layer. Before, I would just sort of block them in as random um, shapes and uh, then start, 
um, refining them and repainting them but I was finding I was spending a lot of time um, cropping adjusting trimming and and then having to sort of merge edges that I'd cut where I've sort of resized stuff so what I do now I tend to kind of rough in a, a painted shape of the subject and then I'll, I'll start painting over it I'll start adding the color and the form and the texture and that way it seems to me that I can um, get to the end result a lot quicker and more accurately so that's what I'm doing these days so this is a sort of a new technique that I've been um, working with over the last few paintings you probably will have noticed so I'm using a lighter color still using the turpentine brush just to sort of sketch these in really rough and and I use the eraser a lot to sort of um, change things that I'm not too happy with so you can see there I'm uh, taking out the uh, canopy or lid of the push chair and then repainting that in I did lose the color a little bit so the, the brush changes slightly and then I clean it up and refine it till I've got something that I think resembles the actual photograph so I do like the fact that in procreate it hasn't got a reference image but you can split the screen and drop the uh, your photo next to it because I can really zoom in close uh, with that feature which you can't really do so much in other other apps so I do like that um, I have to say I mean I consider this to be an oil painting in the same way that when I'm painting in art rage and I'm using the thick paint their oil paintings too but for me this is a, um, a much different style uh, but I like it equally as much and in some cases I like it more I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are do you prefer the oil paints with the thick paint uh, that you can do in art rage or do you like this kind of um, it's flatter approach but the brush strokes uh, are more open I suppose and it's almost a little bit like you've done it with pastels but um, very different I suppose you could get you know really close if you was using these kind of palettes in art rage I tend to go for sort of more vibrant um, color schemes when I'm working in art rage for some reason I don't know why it's just like that when you squirt out the tubes of paint it sort of drags me down that route some some somehow anyway back to this so you can see I've now started painting in um, the push chair nearly finished that uh, getting Killy in there and this is all about light and shade to get the form really and I love the way you can use the blending brush to push colors in I'm using that there just sort of smudge colors together a bit more paint going in and then just sort of blending them together that uh, works really really well and I'm really liking this sort of hit and miss approach with the brush strokes so I don't think I even used uh, a, a, an actual oil brush either one of mine or the default ones I just stuck with the turpentine brush and the grunge brush and to be honest if I did use any of the other uh, paint brushes it was only for the odd stroke and I decided that the turpentine brush was doing the job fine and I kind of stuck with that so I was really pleased how, how uh, the push chair came out I thought I got a lot of uh, form over the canopy and everything and uh, I felt that was working really well and that sort of encouraged me to get into painting Dan and I'm still sticking with those sort of earthy colors really uh, liking how this is coming out and I'm still thinking at this point that the paintings hanging on the wall are finished I'm not going to do anything else to them at this point I just want all the focus to be on uh, Dan and Killy but I did feel that that painting was uh, proportionally slightly uh, too square so I did, did stretch that and that was what I was talking about where I had to sort of blend the colors together I was doing a lot of that 
before and by sketching in uh, the main features or figures in the painting this has now saved me a lot of time I felt that this um, palette had got some nice skin tones as well sort of really uh, a little bit earthy and not um, probably exact skin tones but I did like the the effect although there's not you don't see much skin in it it's just the side of the face so um i don't know why i felt that was important really so you can see how quick i can get this painting done once i've done a sketch it sort of really does uh make the process move along so much quicker And then once I've got the main figure in, I clean up the, um, I was going to say pencil lines around the edge, but actually I mean the um, the, the sort of light coloured paint around the edge, just to sort of tidy that up a little bit. Always looking at the source photo and refining. And then I'm looking at getting in this um rucksack that is in actual fact full of everything that killy needs to get him through the day changing nappies bottles food wipes to wipe his uh, uh, chin when he's had a drink and, and all that kind of stuff so um, dan and his mum carry that bag absolutely everywhere i like the um the shadows in this painting I, I really love the way that they're almost black and that's you know i've been watching a fair few um photography channels where they're going oh keep detail in your in your darks and you know what sometimes i just don't think that that's a, a thing to do i think it's almost better to just sort of lose all that detail and leave it to the imagination and I've been messing around with black and white photography a bit, and um, I think it's cool to lose lose all that detail and have huge areas of black almost. So that's just me, and I'm probably wrong, but um, from a painterly point of view, uh, that's how I like to um, work, I guess. Just putting in the handrail of that a uh, push chair that where his arms rest in doing a lot of blending work there i just wanted to uh, sort of add a look and, and felt that the head wasn't quite right and i wanted to put some highlights in his hair so sort of popping those in this took me a remarkably long time to get that hair right actually So I felt I needed to look at the shadows under the feet and I created a new layer below the um, main painting layer, erased the shadow that was there and then painted in a new shadow. And that meant that I didn't have to sort of paint around the shoes and the wheel. I could just sort of put strokes in really, really quick. A little bit more detail in the bag. This was one of them paintings that I was sort of couldn't believe how quick it all came together it just happened so fast and uh, i was just sort of enjoying it and adding little bits of detail and things that just because i was sort of really into the painting and uh, i didn't want it to stop because i'd only been painting probably about an hour and i thought i thought this was going to take me all day but it didn't it just came together so so quick and at this point i thought because i was enjoying it why not come on let's do, put a little bit of um effort into the paintings on the wall the uh josie fright and this is one of my favorite paintings of, of his it's called the ori and because he, he was into sort of the industrial revolution and he painted lots of uh sort of scientific and um 
sort of uh, photo, uh, paintings of the Industrial Revolution and that kind of thing. But this one uh, is is one of my favourites. I think it's the light on the children's faces. And I w wasn't going to attempt to do the Josie Fry. I just wanted to get an impression of, of the Josie Fry there. And um, see if I could get something that would look okay but be so loose it could be anything really and it was just those um the ori the sort of curved lines i think make it and i made sure i got them in in one sweep i didn't want them to be sort of jagged and loose i just wanted to do it in one sweep no um smoothing on the brush or anything like that just had to do it so it took two or three goes for each each uh, one to get that right and you can see i'm just sort of I suppose it is abstract, really. It's really, really uber loose, really loose. But that I didn't want it to detract from Dan and Killy. They were the main feature, and the paintings were secondary to um, tell the story, really. And this was Dan's first visit to see Josie Fry. Actually, he was blown away. He couldn't uh, believe it that we got such a cool artist in Derby. So just sort of put in the final lines in there to this uh, Ori. This this particular line took quite a few attempts. There we go. And that is it. That is my painting of an introduction to Josie Fry. I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because i have lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them with you so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye